Well, hello students, and welcome to the HSC Chemistry video series, and this particular production of materials, video number 10. Now, this is an apology because I noticed when I was preparing for the next group of HSC students who are about to start, which will also be the last group that goes through with this current course, um, that I'd actually forgotten to put this one in. So um, there is one more little video that's going to come for you, uh, just focusing in on biopolymers. Now I should also say that this is going to be a very quick overview because biopolymers are one of those important areas like uh, batteries that you need to actually learn an example of. You need something that you can write about, a specific type of biopolymer from a specific type of organism um, and how it's currently being used or what it may be used for or how it may be used to substitute for um, polymers that are currently being produced from petrochemicals. But let's have a quick look at this one and just complete our series uh, and then we'll move on to some other things. So what is the current state of development in the biopolymer industry? Well, <clears throat> good question. You remember that biopolymers are ones that originate from biomass, which is the weight basically of all of the living components in the ecosystem. And so if we can uh, produce chemicals from the living components, then this does one very important thing. It moves us into the renewable uh, resource category, which is uh, something that petrochemicals like crude oil are not in. These ones can be renewed, regenerated, get their energy from the sun, and are not going to be likely to run out in um, a certain period of time as our non-renewable resources are. So some of the starch-based uh, biopolymers include things like thermoplastic, water-soluble xanthan gums, food, cosmetics. Um, some of the sugar-based ones are the polylactides, and I'll have a look at one of those just very briefly in an upcoming slide. Um, these used for packaging and also some different types of plant biopolymers, uh, primarily used in the food industry as gums or stabilizers, emulsifiers and thickeners. So when you're talking about biopolymers, whichever one you're researching in a little bit more detail, there are three really key things that you need to make sure that you draw out um, during your discussions. And the first and the most important of these is this issue of biodegradability. The problem that we have with most plastics at the moment is they are non-biodegradable. And as a pot as a degradable, and as a consequence, we have a lot of landfill that is being taken up, and some of this uh, also makes its way into our waterways, um, that is just not going to break down in the environment. Um, that's a problem. So the biodegradability of biopolymers is a serious tick um, in terms of the use of biopolymers, just for making sure that they are a little bit more um, environmentally friendly. They, they um, cope with uh, exposure to the environment a little bit better, or perhaps we should say that the environment copes a little bit better um, with exposure to them. Um, certainly in the um, <clears throat> medical and health line, uh, there are some really important biocompatibility issues associated with the use of biopolymers. And this can be everything from um, sutures uh, to also replacements for things like bones and cartilage. Cartilage, there should be an R in there somewhere. Um, so the primary thing about this, of course, is if they are biodegradable and biocompatible, that is we can use them in living organisms, um, but they break down over time. It means they can transfer loads much more um, steadily as bones are re-knitting or, or cartilage is regrowing and um, also for things like um, uh, stitches and things that have been put into wounds. If we can use uh, a biopolymer as our suture material, then again, that doesn't uh, mean we have the problem of having to come back to have the stitches out. They should naturally break down of their own accord. And again, biocompatibility is a big plus for many biopolymers. And as I mentioned on the previous slide, also critical is the fact that they are a renewable resource. So they come from plant material, uh, they come from bacteria, uh, bacterial colonies, which can be grown and, and 
and regrown over and over again to produce these in large quantities in order that we um, can reduce and hopefully uh, eventually replace our reliance on petrochemicals. So the fact that these biopolymers are renewable is really important. From this point on, you really need to just make sure you've got one good example. For a lot of these types of dot points, you've got a big um, choice to make between um, risk and reward. So the payoff for a question like this is that you're probably gonna get four minimum, anything up to maybe seven maximum for a really good quality structured answer around the use of biopolymers how their structure relates to the use, what sort of current polymers are they designed to replace, what's their impact on the environment and so on. But those questions are rare. You may get one of the biopolymer, the battery, the um, perhaps an ester, uh, there's a application of radioisotopes in industry and medicine. So there's going to be a few areas where you're going to have to say, well, look, I need to have something because if I get a question, it's probably going to be a big one. Um, but I don't want to have so much of this that I've got not enough of other things when this question may not come up at all. So what are we going to do? Well, we want to first of all look at how we can increase efficiency from the production of polymers from biomass. So directly linking um, biological organisms to the production of polymers and effectively replacing petrochemicals as a source, uh, crude oil, that sort of thing. Uh, anaerobic fermentation of agricultural waste. So this is one of the things that we wanna try and do is if we can get to ethanol and from ethanol to ethene, from uh, biopolymers like cellulose and plants, uh, like glucose as the key component of respiration and through fermentation then to ethanol and <clears throat> ethene. We know that ethene is our key starting material. At the moment it's sourced from um, crude oil, but, th but this is potentially a great source. Now polylactic acid and polyhydroxybutanoate are the two main ones that come up um, as examples and I encourage you to look at either one, not both, just one of these to look at in a little bit more detail. The polylactic acid is um, created through fermentation of corn to make lactic acid and then we polymerize it. And the synthetic PBA, PHB, sorry, uh, often also known by the more commercial term biopol, uh, produced by genetically modified bacteria primarily, can also be produced by potatoes. And this one is a really good one to talk about in terms of the medical industry for sutures and things like that. So as long as you've got a good example, um, then you're ready to go in this area. Make sure you put as much detail as you can into your questions, but give yourself at least some good starting points and some good headers. A table with some of these key areas too is a good way to approach this sort of thing. Thanks for watching.